Okay, hello and welcome to lesson 21 of Additional Maths with Mr. Barrow. Today we're going to be looking at permutations. This is an extension to the lesson 20, so you must have watched lesson 20 because you will need that information to be able to use it in this lesson. Okay, so before I go through this first worked example, we have three different worked examples in your turns in this lesson. Lots of different types of questions that could be asked, and so I want to carefully go through each type. Before I do so, there's some information we need from last lesson that I just want to remind ourselves on. So the prerequisite knowledge we need is how to find the number of distinct arrangements of R items chosen from a squad of N items. Okay, for example, the number of different ways we can arrange um, a five-a-side team if we have seven people to choose from. OK, so um, and where the positions matter. So who do I pick for goalkeeper? Who do I pick for uh, the defender? Who do I pick for the 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 two midfielders and who do I, the left midfielder and the right midfielder? And who do I pick for the striker? OK, so if I want to know the number of distinct ways in which I can arrange R items chosen from a squad of N items, it is called NPR. And P stands for permutations. So the word arrangements, okay, could be swapped for permutations. So it's all talking about the number of permutations of ways in which we can arrange some items. Okay. And the calculation to work out NPR, as we learned last lesson, was N times N minus 1 times N minus 2, all the way down to timesing by n take away r plus 1. Okay, so it's not quite n factorial. In fact, it is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. And I'll give an example for that. So, so that's the, the formula to find NPR. And there's a button on your calculator which will calculate it directly for you. For example, that in the last lesson, we did the um, number of ways of choosing of arranging five things if we have eight to choose from and that would be 8p5 and that's equal to 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 okay which is 8 factorial divided by 8 minus 5 which is 3 factorial okay and so if we divide 8 factorial by 3 factorial we can cancel the 3 times 2 times 1 on top with the 3 times 2 times 1 underneath, and we just get 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, okay? And that gives us 6,720. And there's a button on your calculator which is above the multiplication symbol, so you do shift multiplication will give you the NPR button. So you press 8, then shift, then multiply, then 5, then equals, and it should give you 6,720. OK, so that's going to be key, being able to use that button on our calculator. So let's have a look at the first question. OK, let's say I want to award special prizes to my favourite Harry Potter books. So I have seven books on my shelf, seven Harry Potter books on my shelf. OK, and I want to award a top prize to my favourite one. And that top prize would be maybe giving it a... Um, a new plastic cover to keep it nice and safe. I want to award a second prize. Maybe that's um, writing a little inscription inside it. And I want to award a third prize, maybe just lightly dusting it, um, cleaning it. OK, to my top three books in amongst those seven. So I want to know how many ways can these three prizes be awarded to my seven books? So this is a classic permutation question. It's the number of ways I can arrange three objects when I can choose out of seven. And the process is just thinking about, well, I have a first place position, a second place position, and a third place position to choose. And I want to place some choose one of the books as my first choice. So I have seven to choose one from to do that. OK, so I have seven to choose from the first one. And then for each of the possible choices I have for my first place, 
I then have six choices left for my second place. And for each of those choices I have, I've chosen, I have then got five choices for my third place. So seven times six times five will give us our answer. But the calculation we could do very quickly on our calculator is simply from seven books, I want a number of permutations of three. So choosing, arranging three different books out of seven possible ones. And that's equal to 210, which is seven times six times five. So there are 210 possible ways in which I could award first, second and third place to my books. Of course, there's only one possible option I'm going to choose. It's going to be uh, Order of the Phoenix, then Goblet of Fire, then Prisoner of Azkaban. But that's by the by. There are 210 possible ways I could have ordered those top three prizes. OK, so I want you to have a go now. Let's say you have you are taking 10 GCSEs. OK, so 10 different subjects. There are 10 subjects. And you want to write down your top four subjects in order. So you want to give prizes, maybe, to your top four teachers, maybe. Okay, but give prizes to your to the top four subjects. Okay, how many different possible ways are there of assigning a top four? when you have 10 subjects to choose from? That's the question, okay? How many different ways are there? How many possibilities? So pause the video and then have a go at answering that. The answer is you have first, second, third, and fourth. You have 10 choices for the first, nine choices for the second, eight for the third, and seven for the fourth. So that's the calculation you could do, but the better way of doing it is 10 P four. The number of permutations of four objects chosen from 10. Okay. And that's 5,040 different possible ways. Well done if you got that right. Okay. But of course the correct order, there's only one is First maths, second maths, third maths. Anyway, let's move on. So here's the second type of problem. I've got five biographies and eight fiction novels. So I have 13 books in total. OK. I need to read six books next month. I set myself a target of reading six books next month from these 13. In how many different orders can I read the six books if, firstly, there's no constraint. I can choose any six, okay? So if I have to read six books and I can read any six, then that's relatively simple. That's just ignore the fact that, that I have five biographies and eight fiction novels. I just simply have 13 different books and I want to choose six in order. OK, so which is my first book, second book, third book, etc. So I have 13 choices for my first book, then 12 choices for my second, etc. So it would be 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. OK, so let me just check that. So I've got 6, 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times, no, just down to 8. OK. So the way I can do this is I can do it just in one calculation just by doing 13 P6. So the number of permutations of six objects chosen from 13. And that gives me 1,235,520 different possible ways in which I can um, read my six books. There are that, that sounds huge, but remember, we have lots to choose from. And there are, after each choice, I then have a, still a lot to choose from. So it, 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 it counts up. So that's part A. So there were no restrictions. But part B, I'm asking, 
Now I need to read two biographies and four fiction. So in my six, I have a constraint. Of my six, I need two of them to be biographies and four of them to be fiction. This, to be honest, is, is an extension. Um, you are very unlikely to be asked a question this difficult in the ad math test, but it's nice to see if you can work at this level and if you can understand how to work through this process. The way to attempt this problem is firstly to think, well, let's imagine if I had to do it, the two biographies first and then the four fiction afterwards. So I have six books I need to read. So six spaces. My first book needs to be biography, second book biography, then fiction for the last four. It doesn't have to be in this order, but let's just say, let's say that that is the order in which I'm going to do it. And let's think about how we calculate that. So if, if I'm choosing biography first, I have five to choose from. There are five biographies I have. So I have to do five choices. If I've read a biography book, I now have four biography books left. So then there are four choices for my second book. So for that, the two biographies, there's five times four different ways in which I can choose and read my two biographies. For the fiction, there are eight fiction novels. So for the first fiction I choose, I have eight choices. Then I have one fewer, seven, then one fewer, six, and one fewer, five. And for each of these together, there are that many different ways in which I could read biography, biography, then fiction, then fiction, then fiction, then fiction. And this calculation is 5P2. So that's the first two parts. That's the number of ways in which I can arrange two books from five multiplied by 8 P4, which is the number of ways of arranging four books from eight, okay, which is this. And that there will give me the number of ways in which I can read two biographies followed by four fiction, which is 300, sorry, 33,600. However, I I didn't say in the question that I had to read my two biographies first and then my four fiction. I could read them in other orders. Okay. Here are all the different possible orders there are for reading two biographies and four fiction. We could systematically write down all the possible options and there are 15 possible options. Okay. The one we looked at was this one. Biography, biography, then fiction, 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 fiction. But those are all the other possible options and all equally likely. So each of them would have 33,600 ways in which they could be arranged. So I would have to multiply that by 15 because each of the 33,600, there are 15 different possible ways in which I could do those. In the next lesson, in lesson 22, I will show you a calculation that you can do that gives you the number of ways of, of choosing two things out of six. Okay, so there are six options and the number of different ways in which I could arrange the two biographies in within the six different positions. And that's called six choose two. But we'll talk about that more in the next lesson, but that will equal 15. So this C button is the number of combinations of ways in which I can choose two things out of six, but we'll go into that next lesson, okay? For today, just make sure you can systematically locate all the different possible options. So my answer to this question is 33,600 times 15, because there are 15 possible different ways in which I could arrange two biographies and four fictions which is 504,000 different ways. Okay, so that's my answer to this question. Remember this part B is an extension to the course. Okay, I'll give you a question that's similar. See how you could do. So you have four action, 
four different action and seven different comedy DVDs. DVDs, what are they? Yeah, they're the discs you put in rather than streaming films. Okay, and so you have to watch that specific film. So you have four action and seven comedy DVDs. You decide to watch three DVDs back to back. Okay, so you watch three different ones in a row. How many ways can you watch the DVDs? Okay, if A, you can watch any three. How many different ways are there of watching the three in a row if you can watch any three? And part B, if you have to watch one action and two comedy. Okay, pause the video, have a go at that. And then I'll go through the answer. So the answer for part A, part A is simply, you have 11 DVDs in total and you can watch any three. So that's just 11 P3, which is 990 different possible three DVD marathons that you could do. Okay, 990 different ways and you can order the three films. Part B, firstly think of it in terms of Let's say you watch the action, then the comedy, then the comedy, okay? Personally, I would do comedy, comedy action, but there we go. If you have the action first, then the comedy, then the comedy. So firstly, action, there are four choices. Then comedy, there are seven choices. Then the second comedy, you now have six choices. So it's four times seven times six, which is really four P1 times 7P2, which is 168. However, you could have done it in different orders. Here are all the different possible orders. Action, comedy, 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 action, comedy, 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 action. So there are three possible options. Each of them have 168 ways. So you do three lots of 168 which is 504 different ways. Well done if you got that right, okay? By the way, you know, if you're understanding this and if you're answering the questions correctly, that's superb. Permutations and combinations, the whole combinatorics area and topic um, confuses many maths teachers, okay? Permutations often cause maths teachers palpitations. So well done if you're understanding. Here's the last ex worked example, okay? Honestly, I'm not um, obsessed by Harry Potter. I do like them. I have 10 books on my shelf, of which seven are Harry Potter books. How many ways can I arrange the books if the Harry Potter books must stay together, okay? But I'm not saying that the Harry Potter books need to be in the order one to seven, left to right. I'm saying they can be in any order as long as they are together. There is no other book in between um, defiling the Harry Potter unit. Okay. So with this type of question, if you've got a specific bunch of items which need to stay together, think of them as one unit. So we think of the Harry Potter books as a single unit. So in effect, you have... Here, there are 10 books in total, seven of them are Harry Potter, so three of them are not Harry Potter, and they can be moved around at will. So in effect, you have four units. You have four units you can arrange. One of them being the bunch of seven Harry Potter books, okay? So you have the three non-Harry Potter books and the Harry Potter block. Four units can be arranged in four factorial ways, okay? Because you have four choices for the, book, the, the unit that's on the left, three choices for the next unit, two choices for the next unit, and then you slot the last unit in. So there are four factorial ways in which we can arrange these four units. However, 
the Harry Potter unit, so four factorial for the four units. But then think about, let's say we put the Harry Potter block here, okay? That Harry Potter block itself can be arranged in many different ways. There are seven objects within that one unit. I can arrange them in seven factorial ways, okay? So for each of these four factorial ways in which I arrange the shelf, I have to multiply it by seven factorial because for each of them, I can rearrange the Harry Potter unit, the Harry Potter block in seven factorial ways. So our answer is four factorial times seven factorial, which is 120,960 different possible ways of arranging my 10 books with this constraint. If there was no constraint, it would just be 10 factorial. Okay, which is much larger. But for this, there is constraint. And so that's the answer. Have a go at this one. You have seven CDs. CDs, what are they? Um, they play music and you have to listen to that one album all at once. Okay, so you have seven CDs in total on a shelf. Three of them are by the Foo Fighters. Okay. How many ways can you arrange the seven CDs if the three Foo Fighter CDs need to stay together? Okay. How many ways can you arrange them so the Foo's are together? Can you try and answer that? So pause the video and try and answer that, and then I'll go through the answer. Okay, so the answer is, firstly, you have three Foo CDs and therefore there are four other ones. So therefore, think of the three Foo CDs as one block. So really you have one Foo block and then four other blocks. That's five units that you're arranging. So that would be arranged in five factorial ways. But then for each of those fact five factorial ways, you, you can rearrange the Foo Fighter CDs themselves in three factorial ways. Okay, so five factorial times three factorial, which is 720 different possible ways. Okay, if you got that right, superb. Remember that if you don't understand anything, if there is a, an explanation which isn't that clear, make sure you write in the comment and ask and I will Try and get back to you. Okay, what you should do now, after having thought through all three of those different types of example, is you should have a go at exercise 10.3, but only this, these specific questions, because the third exercise in, in chapter 10 focuses on both permutations and combinations, but I'm gonna teach you combinations in the next lesson. The questions that specifically focus on permutations which is the number of different ways you can arrange things where the order of the thing matters, are these questions. 1i, question 2, question 11, question 14, part i, and question 16. Okay, so go practice, look at the different types of questions, see if you can work through them using the knowledge you have. Enjoy.